In order to keep games interesting after so long, people devise challenges like completing the game at level 1, or using only starting equipment. The problem is, these challenges are very scripted in what you do, and so become pretty boring after the first run. Now, a few weeks ago, I asked people to give me a challenge run for Final Fantasy X. Possible or not, it didn't matter, as I would find that out, and we had some amazing suggestions, to be honest. One of the great ones is items only. So, let's do it, shall we? Can I beat Final Fantasy X using only items? The rules are simple. I can only use items from either the item command or the use command. So, no physical attacks or magic allowed. Overdrives are not allowed. I cannot summon other than Baval against Isaru and the tutorial on Besaid. I'm allowed to attack with Tidus until Riku joins at Barj Temple. And I can't do any Balgamine Aeon challenges for easy items. And of course, because it's items only, I can't capture monsters. So, no monster arena. Now, I'm writing this out as I go, so I don't know what's going to happen yet either. Comment down below if you think I can do it or not, and what you think the hardest part of the playthrough will be. After all, comments help a lot on YouTube. Also, these videos take a really long time to make, so go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button while you're at it. Honestly, I think it shouldn't be too hard. It will require a bit more grinding to get Tidus, Steel and Use before Besaid, but I'm not worried about the early game. Rather than hard, it's just going to take time, of course. I don't have access to the Monster Arena because you can't capture it with items, so late game farming is going to be tough and slow. Also, a little plug, go ahead and follow my Twitter, link down below, and make sure to follow me on Twitch so you can catch my playthroughs live. So, with that said, let's jump into it, shall we? I start off by choosing the Expert Sphere Grid. This is important because it's the only way I can get Steel and Use on Tidus before Meehan High Road. However, it will require a lot of grinding with Riku. And of course, we're choosing the original soundtrack because it's amazing. So, going through Zanakand is a ball fest, though we are allowed to use the tax at this point because it's all we have. Of course, we don't have access to the Sphere Grid just yet, so we continue on and get to Barge Temple. I use the Albed Sphere here to copy over my primers just because I love how much of the Albed insults you early on. Finally, we get Riku joining during the boss battle with Click, and at this point, the challenge truly begins. We now have access to Steel and Juice, which means no attacks whatsoever now. This is a bit of a long, drawn-out fight. We're going to steal and use grenades to take down Click while keeping Riku healthy with potions. You need to deal 1,500 points of damage in order to win the fight. So what I did was get it close to death and then steal a few extra grenades. I can get an infinite amount of potions coming up and the grenades are pretty easy to steal here anyway. So, might as well get a head start on the only thing I can use to damage for a long, long time. Next up is we need to get into some ruins with Riku. And before that is a majorly long and slow grind. We need to fight the Piranhas and get a whopping 20 levels for Tidus so he can get Steel and Jews. And of course, we have to do this with just Riku at this point because only she has used. This is time consuming because the Piranhas only give 2 XP when overkilled, and we have to heal very often. At least we can get 99 potions from the Albed on the ship though. Also, because Riku outspeeds Tidus, we have to waste a turn so Tidus can defend, allowing him to get EXP. After far too long, we finally have Steel and Use for Tidus. Now, we need to get 99 grenades from the Piranhas before we move on. We're going to need these for upcoming parts. Also, does a 10 hour grind this early deserve a like? I think it does, and maybe even a Twitter follow link down below in the description. Okay, so because of the grind, Trops is a cakewalk and gets decimated. From there, we head to Besaid. Not a whole lot here for now, so we do the temple, get Unit Walker and Lulu, blow Kimari up, and do the tutorials. Guess what though? We have another grind. There are three enemies we can fight on Besaid. The Dingo, 
Condor and Waterflan. They have items we need to steal. Dingo has Sleeping Powder as a rare steal. This is going to be amazing for a long time, so we absolutely need 99 of these. Likewise, Condor has Smoke Bombs, another amazing item which lasts throughout the entire game. So again, we need 99 of these. You can also get them from the second Garuda tutorial where you learn about Walker's Dark Attack. Of course, it's a rare steal from Condor, but it's a common steal from Garuda. Just be warned, after Walker's tutorial, you can't fight the Garuda anymore. Finally, the Flan has two steals. Fish Scales, which are basically the water spell, and Dragon Scales, which is the water spell. Needless to say, getting some elemental damage items will be very helpful, especially water because that's going to be amazing in the Thunder Plains. So, we waste more time getting a 99 of each of them. The way I tackled this was using Fish Scales to kill off single enemies and just steal from Flans until I got those items. Then, I ran from all battles with a Flan and only stayed for Condors and Ding goes, using fish scales to kill one off and kept stealing until I ran out of potions. Then I ended the fight and ran all the way to Besaid to buy another 99 potions. Okay, we haven't even left Besaid yet and we're already nearly 34 hours deep at this point. I realised I seriously underestimated the amount of time this might take. Still, I'm expecting this to only really be grind heavy early on since I don't really need much later on. So, after that long grind, we also have enough XP to get Yuna on Walker, Steel and Juice. So, now we have a full party who can actually do things. At this point, I'm going to focus on Tidus, Yuna and Walker. I need to power Yuna up so her Aeons get stronger, ready for Baval. The Sinspawn fight on the way to Killika is a breeze. I use almost all of my grenades apart from 10 to farm Sin Scales for a little more EXP just to give some leeway for health and to get some free easy levels for Lulu and Kimari. Then I use Fish Scales to kill two Sin, uh, two sin Scales to reduce incoming damage and then finish the fin off with Fish Scales as well. For Sinspawn Eculis, I use Smoke Grenade to inflict Darkness, and then just finish it off with Grenades. While it's not a huge amount of EXP I farm here, it helps as Lulu and Kimari get that little bit closer to Steel and Juice. Now, Killika is another big grind, but this one is really helpful and will carry me through most of the game. Dianonyx has the rare steel Petrify Grenade, and this is pretty much what's going to carry me through most of the game, so we absolutely need 99 of these. Killer B also has the rare steel Poison Fang. This item does a lot of damage, and it's going to be our main boss killer for a long time. So, of course, we want 99 of these as well. Finally, we're going to get some Electro Marbles and Lightning Marble from the Yellow Element. These are just for the upcoming boss battles in Luka and the fight against Riku at the Moonflow, so we don't need too many here. Fast forward another 7 hours and we're done. Having uh, 3 people able to steal makes this so much faster than the Besaid Grind, thankfully. Still, we don't have Ifrit yet and we're 41 hours in. At least now with these items, we should be blowing through a huge chunk of the game. Not gonna lie though, Twitch saved my life here, giving me plenty to watch while I did the grinding. So, why not check the description for a link to my Twitch so you can catch me live in the future. Of course, there's my Twitter down there as well, which you should also totally follow. Now, I use Ochu as a testing ground basically, noting just how much damage everything does, so I know roughly what I need for future fights. It's pretty much what I expected, 500 to 1000 damage across the board, apart from Poison Fangs, which do a massive 2000 damage. Needless to say, Ochu didn't live long. Since Born Genix is a breeze with Poison Fangs, even if I did dupe out and use a Fish Scale on him, which healed him. Now, we get Ifrit and move on to Luka, blast some Machina with Electro Marbles and have another boss, the Obliterator, which is pretty easy thanks to the Lightning Marbles we got. So we beat the goers for both Swag and some Strength Spheres and we're done in Luka. Now, this is where I start changing up my strategy here. Because of my speed, spat, uh, my speed stat, the turn order is almost always Tidus first, 
Yuna second and Walker third. Because of this, I have Titus and Yuna both stealing, and then Walker throwing a Petrify Grenade to finish the fight. This way, I'm getting a nice surplus of items, even if I don't actually need them, and it's allowing all three to get EXP. Balgamine gets skipped because of the no Aeon rule, then we have the Chocobo Eater. I was a little worried about this fight because it hits hard and can push me off the cliff. However, smoke grenades to give it darkness and then poison fangs destroyed it rather easily. So, on to the Mushroom Rock. Now, Funga here has Silence Grenades to steal. These do decent damage and are a common steal. So, I kill off the other monsters uh, with it and then stock up on these while we go through. Uh, well, sorry, while I go through the area. Because of Pollen, though, this was an arduous process. Likewise, Garuda has Smoke Bombs, which we can use to refill our stash of them. Now, since Mullen Gui is pretty easy on the first fight, getting decimated by Poison Fangs again. The second fight is a little harder though, because I neglected Auron. So he doesn't have Steal or Use, meaning only Yuna can do any damage here. Once again though, Poison Fangs have proved to be too much for him to handle. Man, these, uh, these Poison Fangs are really coming in handy for the bosses, and are pretty much the linchpin of this run. On the Jose High Road, we refill our Petrify Grenades from Basilisks, and of course, Poison Fangs from Bite Bugs. We can speed through the next section pretty easily now. We get Exion, skip the second Balgamine fight, and destroy Riku's Extractor with Lightning Marbles. Now, we do Riku's tutorial and replace Waka with her. Even though she's a lot weaker, I'd rather look at her ass instead of Waka's during battles, so that's my reason for that. Okay, speed through a Gawados Alarm and decimate the Thunder Plains with all those fish scales and dragon scales we got on Besaid. I also steal some light curtains from Iron Giants because these can be customized onto armor to give auto protect. Likewise, I get Lunar Curtains from Lava because these customize into auto shell and are super easy to get if you throw a silence grenade because then they never do anything all fight. Finally, I pray to three cactus statues, allowing me to battle groups of three cactus. This way, I can steal chocobo feathers from cactus, because these cast haste when used. Unfortunately, I didn't have an armor for Riku with two empty slots, so I made armor for Tidus and Yuna, then I got 80 Lunar Curtains and 70 Light Curtains, so when I finally did get an armor for Riku, I can customize it right away. This took a stupid amount of time. Now, because of spawn rates and needing so many, we're now up to nearly 70 hours of playtime after finishing the grind. But these armors are going to prove life saving in later fights when things start taking a long time to kill. You know what doesn't take a long time though? Following me on Twitter and uh, Twitch. Links down below. Okay. At this point though, instead of killing mobs, I started to escape after stealing because I wanted to keep petrified grenades, uh, grenades for later and I started to run low on smoke bombs and sleep powders. In fact, looking over all my items, I'm getting a little low on most things and I don't have too many good steel targets coming up for a while at least until I get to the car lands. So, trying to preserve as many as possible is going to be a challenge now I think. So fly through Mokolonia with Petrify Grenades, and then we have what I really expected to be a Nightmare Boss, Sphere Morph. However, Auto Shell and Auto Protect on armor combined with Haste from Chocobo Wings, uh, sorry, Chocobo Feathers, uh, and Poison Fangs is a far more lethal combo than I ever expected, resulting in this being a one-sided slaughter. At Rin's Lodge, I buy 99 high potions for the upcoming boss battles, as I'll likely burn through them pretty quickly coming up. Also, I refill on status curing items just in case. I also farm the Snow Wolf here just to refill my sleep powders as well, because every little helps with uh, items. Then it's on to another boss, the Crawler. I leave the little flying part as is because I can't use magic or summons anyway, so I blast it with poison fangs. Next up is Seymour, another easy boss fight that gives no real trouble other than the fact it's a free stage fight and uses up a lot of poison fangs. 
followed by Wendigo. Again though, no real trouble thanks to smoke bombs inflicting darkness and haste from chocobo feathers. However, I am starting to run low on poison fangs because of four boss battles basically back to back, so I'm getting a little worried about later bosses because of running out. I also can't restock them until the calm lands, and there's two tough boss battles before then, with some normal tough encounters as well. Okay, because of the party split here, I have to use Walker instead of Yuna, but thankfully Beaconel is extremely easy thanks to Petrify Grenades. During this trek, I make sure to stock up on Albed Potions, a great party-wide heal item that also cures some statuses, along with Smoke Bombs from Zoos and Alkyones. The Zoos have a lot of health though and hit hard, even with Auto Protect, which means I have to waste Poison Fangs on them. Not good at all since my supply is already getting low. I do however manage to get 99 Shadow Gems from the Sandworms, an awesome addition because it halves an enemy's HP to a maximum of 9999 without break damage limit. These are going to come in very handy for bosses and tough enemies later. They have 45,000 health though so I don't kill any of them and escape once I steal a few gems. Now, due to the XP in this area and the fact smoke bombs still do good damage and I have a real easy supply of them in this area, I do some grinding because this is pretty much the last time smoke bombs will be clearing battles in one go for me and I'm getting ambushed a lot and barely surviving because of my low defense. So, 8 hours later and I'm feeling more confident that I can actually survive upcoming fights. So it's on to home where petrified grenades make short work out of everything here. Next up, home goes boom! So every it surprised me at how easy it actually was. I set up haste on everybody and have Riku constantly stealing, trying to build up some water gems. Then I try to use a, a shadow gem, completely forgetting it doesn't work on every. So, I go back to Smoke Bombs for Darkness and finish it, finish it off by spamming Poison Needles. I power through Baval and break up the wedding with some Sleep Powders for the Soldiers, Smoke Bombs for Darkness and then Dragon Scales for the Max. Then we get to Isaru, the second time I'm allowed to summon in the whole game. The first was the tutorial back in Besaid, and now we're forced to do it again. But because of the expert grid, Yuna's Aeons are pretty beefy, so I just destroy him completely. Then we have Every Atlanta, and needless to say, I cheese the hell out of him with Phoenix Downs. Although I do get in a steal or two for Water Gems before he binds the dust. Everything else in the water just gets a Petrify Grenade to the face. Next up is the high bridge. Monsters here will be far too annoying to fight, so I escape from all fights. Now we have Seymour, but our third party member is replaced with Kimari, who I haven't leveled at all, which means he was outspared badly, and likewise I had a nightmare of a time trying to switch him out to Riku. In the end, Seymour ended his life before I brought him back and gave up. So I used the Chocobo Feather on him to get Riku in quicker. I tried a Shadow Gem, which of course doesn't work. Kinda regret farming these now, to be honest. I do get Tidus constantly stealing for Tetra Elements. These are going to be lifesavers later. Then I managed to poison him with the first Poison Fang for extra damage each turn. Now I'm taking counters often and he ends up casting Flare, nearly wiping Riku out. So I had to actually heal this fight with some Albed Potions before I managed to get the win. I had just 17 Poison Fangs left. Thankfully there are no more bosses before I can refill on them. Now, this was an eye-opener for me. It let me realise just what I'm in for against future bosses. Because I'm on the expert grid, my stat placement is really skewed. So, while I'm fast, I have very little defence and health. Something I'm going to have to remedy later. But, not only that, I deal very little damage now compared to bosses' health pools. This means fights are going to drag and I need to prepare to heal my way through these fights. And I have to ensure I have enough items to actually kill said bosses. So, in the calm lands, I refill my Petrify Grenade counter by stealing from Anacondas, and at long last, refill my Poison Fangs from Neveros. Then, I also get some Ice Gems from Chimera Brains, 
Fire Gems from Flame Flan and Drain Powder from Skull. This is a stronger version of Sleeping Powder. I ignore Balgamini for a third time and I finally get an armor for Riku with two empty slots. So I finally customize her and auto protect and auto shell armor as well now. Also, I leveled Kimari a little to get him steal and use for the upcoming Ronso fight. With that out of the way, we can move on to the next boss, the Defender X. Now, this battle was rather easy, but also annoying. I start out with the usual chocobo feathers for haste and use smoke bomb to inflict darkness on him. Once that was done, I proceed to spam fire gems because they do roughly 1000 more damage compared to poison fangs. The downside is he uses sloga pretty often, which means I need to use more chocobo feathers to remove slow and get haste back. He does this a total of five times, which means I end up using a full 15 chocobo feathers in this one fight alone. The bright side though is, thanks to darkness, he never actually manages to even hit me. After all is said and done though, he, is, he finally goes down and I can move on to Gagazette. Now we have the Ronto battle. I don't bother stealing level 3 key spheres here because I have absolutely no need for them in this playthrough, nor do I even need haste from Chocobo Feathers because I have barely leveled Kimari. Both Biren and Yankei are also low leveled with low stats, allowing me to just throw a couple of poison fangs to end the fight. So, I run through Gagazette, escaping all battles and try to conserve items for the upcoming bosses. Speaking of bosses, we have Seymour again. I start off with Chocobo Feathers and also throw a Sound Grenade to inflict silence. However, I experienced something I've never seen before. Seymour was inflicted by silence, but was still able to cast spells. And no, it wasn't the Mortar Barty that was casting the magic either. Anyway, after the initial setup, I proceed to use Poison Fangs, which inflicts Poison Fang on him, and then continue my spam. He inflicts Zombie a few times, so I have to use Remedy to heal it, but I didn't actually take much damage in the whole fight. All in all, much easier than I expected, but it did take over 30 Poison Fangs. Still, at least we're coming to the end now. You know what won't end though? My, city, uh, my silly Twitter posts, so go ahead and follow me, it's linked down below. Okay, in Gagazette Caves, we just escape from everything again, except for Dark Flan, because I need to steal a couple of Star Curtains. This is an item that is basically Reflect, and I need it coming up, because we get another boss, the Sanctuary Keeper. This guy knows Kyoriga, which is going to be a major pain here, hence why I needed Star Curtains. This way, when he goes to heal himself, he will actually be healing me. I start out with Chocobo Feathers and then use a Smoke Bomb to inflict Darkness and a Poison Fang to inflict a Bio. He does manage to land Confusion on Yuna so I have to use a Remedy to remove it. From there it's just a case of spamming gems on him. Because of the Darkness he doesn't manage to land any normal attacks on me and he didn't actually use Kuriga either, completely wasting my Star Curtain. After a few gems and Poison Ticks though he finally succumbs and dies to a Poison Tick. At this point, I run back through Gagazette to once so I can buy some holy waters ready for Unalaska. This is what I'm personally expecting to be the hardest boss battle in this entire playthrough. It's a three phase fight and she has a lot of HP combined with some big damaging attacks. Let me know down in the comments if you guys agree or not. If you don't agree, which do you think is going to be the hardest fight? Comments are great for YouTube's algorithm after all. Okay, before Unalaska though, we have another tough fight, the Spectral Keeper, and this is the hardest fight I've had so far. Multiple deaths and a lot of healing were needed here. I didn't use the trigger command as that's not really sticking to the items only rule, and as such the mines were killing me and his counter was cleaving all three characters. Each attack for around a third of my health. I also completely forgot to give Riku her customized armor, so I finally equip it here. Okay, the battle starts off with Chocobo Feathers, and then I try to poison and give darkness to the boss, but it's immune to both. Not a very good start, and the cleaves are doing massive damage to me, especially Riku, who I didn't have auto protect armor equipped to at this point. Now, this meant I had to use Mega Potions to heal up. Tadis and Yuna did get Berserked, so I have to use Remedy on them. Luckily, neither of them got a turn while Berserked, so no normal attacks were made while under the status. 
I eventually set into a routine though of using a gem followed by an albed potion to heal the cleave and a high potion on somebody uh, when I needed that little bit more healing. Eventually though both Titus and Yuna die to a glyph, uh, sorry a glyph mine. Thankfully, Riku gets free turns thanks to haste and item usage, allowing me to use a Mega Phoenix and then Chocobo Feathers on Titus and Yuna again. Then it's back to the routine of Albed Potions and Fire Gems. The counter was absolutely the biggest trouble here. Even with Auto Protect, it was still doing a third of my total HP, meaning I burned through a lot of potions. I absolutely wasn't expecting this much trouble here. Now I'm even more worried for the upcoming Unalaska. But here we go. I start off with Chocobo Feathers and then move into damage items only to get countered with sleep every time. Sleep Proof Armor would have been a godsend here, but I can't afford to lose my Auto Shell and Auto Protect because of my low stats. Her Absorb does about 1600 points of damage each cast, so pretty big damage compared to my health pools. Thankfully it's single target and haste allows me to heal up pretty easily for phase 1. Phase 2 is annoying because I need to keep one member with a zombie, so this becomes a game of cat and mouse of reviving characters and cleansing all zombies to force her to use Halbiter to inflict zombie again. This also means I can't rely on Mega Potions or Albed Potions because their AoE heals and hurt my zombie characters. Combined with Unalaska casting regen on my zombie characters which acts like poison to them dealing damage every turn. Thankfully her AI isn't that amazing and she sometimes casts Cura on non-zombied members giving me a little extra healing. The downside is I run out of fire gems and water gems during this phase. So I now basically just have some ice gems and poison fangs to try and clear out the third phase. The third phase is dangerous. Unalaska can now cast Mega Death, which will kill all non-zombie party members, which is why I need to keep zombie up on at least one character and bait out Halbiter when needed. She starts out with this killing everybody except Yuna. I use my last Mega Phoenix which revives Titus and Riku but kills Yuna. Eventually I get everybody back alive, Riku has a zombie and I reapply haste on everybody. Her counters are now just weak damage as well allowing me to get plenty of damage in with my remaining ice gems. Things take a bad turn though when she uses Mind Blast removing my haste on all my characters forcing me to reapply and lose out on a bunch of turns. I get hit by Mega Death again and have no Mega Phoenixes left, so I have to rely on just Phoenix Downs. Thankfully it's not a big issue and I manage to get everybody back up and continue my spam of Ice Gems. When she finally dies for good. This was more of a tricky fight than a hard one. She has a lot of HP altogether and it resulted in me losing all my fire gems, water gems and all but 7 of my ice gems. Not to mention quite a few chocobo feathers and worst of all my mega phoenixes. Now the good news is that now she's beat I have the airship and access to every area in the game. And before I go to Sin, I want to steal a few things, which means a very long and tiring process of stealing, running away, and resets, because I just can't handle some of the Omega Ruins monsters. But let's get to it anyway. First of all, I make a first strike weapon for Titus, Yuna, and Riku, just to make sure I don't get wiped out by an ambush. Then I go to a mega ruins and start by stealing crusade. It start. It's, <laughs> oh, I can't talk right now. I go to a mega ruins and start my stealing crusade. First up is black elements. Rare steal the shining gem, which is basically flare. You can also steal these from a Varuna. The way I handled this was I would have one character escape and the other two steal. Then no matter what, I would at least not get a game over. I also get a few Tetra Elements from Master Tonberry and Healing Waters from Adamantois. Finally, I do a big XP grind here because it's super easy with Petrify Grenades. And I can also resupply them pretty easily thanks to the small Lizard Monsters. 
If something was immune to petrify, I would just escape the battle and at least get some EXP, depending on the group of monsters. My current stat pool is really low and badly skewed, so I do this for a bit longer than I probably should have. But either way, it's done now and hopefully it's enough to get me through the rest of the game. As now all that's left to do is sin. Still though, we're nearly 100 hours into this now, but the end is finally in sight. Thanks to the Shining Gems, this wasn't a tough fight that got dragged out like Unalaska. A nice chocobo feather to start before moving into Shining Gem spam. Thanks to getting pendulums from the Remian Temple Chocobo race, I was able to create a Master Thief armor which comes in real handy here, because it lets me steal Supreme Gems effortlessly, and Supreme Gems are basically ultimate. So needless to say, I want as many of these as I can get. The biggest annoyance I had here was the fact I had to use the trigger command to move closer, because I was out of range so neither me nor Sin could actually do anything. In other words, if you stick to the the sole rule of only being allowed to use steel, use an item, then it's impossible to complete the game because of this right here. However, I wanted to see if I could finish the game like this only using items, so I did use the trigger to move closer. At least it doesn't do any damage, although now that I think about it, I can't even understand why this is a part of the game, because it serves no purpose at all to be fair. But with that little tidbit out of the way, I go about getting Titus to steal with his Master Thief armor while Riku and Yuna spam Shining Gems, resulting in a pretty easy win and a very nice 4 Supreme Gems. The second thing goes exactly the same way as the first. Next up in this boss rush, we have Sinspawn Jennies. I open all Chocobo Feathers for haste and healing water to heal everybody after the second fin. I have Titus stealing for more Shining Gems, while Yuna and Riku proceed to use said gems for an effortless win. And the fourth boss we have is Sin's Core. However, I just triple spammed at Shining Gems here for an easy win, as it has no good steals. Ooh, we're really getting close now. It's looking like it's really going to be possible to finish this run. You know what else is super possible? Following my Twitter and Twitch, linked down below. Okay, we still have one more battle against Sin and, well, another chance to steal Supreme Gems. Naturally, we fully exploit that by setting up haste and having Titus do nothing but steal the entire fight. The problem here is Sin has 140,000 HP and an, uh, sorry, on average Shining Gems do about 6,000 damage. That means I need, I, I need 23 of them, pretty much my entire supply. So while the fight isn't exactly hard, it is a little long and sadly means I need to go back to Omega Ruins and farm more Shining Gems. So I do just that to get enough for the final boss rush. Starting with Seymour's fourth and final battle, and also the final chance I now have to steal Supreme Gems. So, after setting up haste on everybody, I get Titus to just keep stealing while Yuna and Riku throw Shining Gems. I did however get Yuna to use Tetra Elemental to give me Null All, to just give me that little bit of extra protection against Seymour's magic. Sadly, he dispelled it along with my haste before it got any real use. So, after reapplying haste, I just kept up the shining gems and steals. I nearly died when he decided to cast Ultima though. All characters went down to yellow health and Tidus, due to not having auto shell equipped, was just a hair's breath away from death. Thankfully, it was when Seymour was just 3 gems away from death, so I didn't need to waste items healing. We have finally reached the final save point of the game, and it only took 98 hours and 26 minutes. We're still not done though. While collecting the little ghostly orb thingies, I got unlucky and got two battles. The first was a Demolith, which I destroyed with Shining Gems, and the second was a Worm, which I escaped on to save items. Just before I moved forward to Jacked, I changed Tadis' armor back to Auto Shell and Auto Protect, and then go in for the fight. Of course, I set up with Chocobo Feathers first, and now I'm at the point where I don't need to hold anything back at all. So I just open up on him with my Supreme Gems and Shining Gems for an extremely easy Phase 1. I do use a Chocobo Feather on Auron as well, just to try and switch him out faster. Titus did get petrified, but an Albed Potion sorted that out. Now, 
onto phase two. However, that was just more of the same with applying haste to Riku, reapplying it to Titus, and then spamming all my supreme gems on him. At this point, I really feel like I should have got some celestial weapons for break damage limits, but that would have meant having to use a different party, which of course means more grinding. So I'll just make do with dealing 9,999 damage with supreme gems. I do use a healing water to fully heal though, uh, just as Jack's overdrive fills completely. And it came so damn close to killing me. I swear my heart stopped beating. Yuna was down to just 79 HP, but I survived. Used a healing water to fully heal and then paid him back with a few more shining gems for the win. At this point, we might as well say we have completed the game considering we have infinite auto life for the Aeons and Yu Yevon. But, well, we can't use that in this playthrough because it's not an item. Still though, it's perfectly fine. The Aeons go down in one or two Shining Gems each, and Yu Yevon goes down in just under 20 gems for an extremely easy and anticlimactic win to this challenge. I did have to use a Star Curtain on him though to inflict Reflect, because he counters everything with Kyorga, which heals him for 9,999. If I didn't have those Star Curtains, this would have been a 100% impossible to win fight. That was pretty lucky for me that I had them, to be honest. Okay, I have to admit, this was a lot of fun to do. I did overgrind some items, which absolutely made this playthrough a good 20 to 30 hours longer than it needed to be. But I really didn't know what to expect. I went overboard, my stats were really skewed towards agility because of Titus and Riku's path, but it worked out in the end and it only took just shy of 100 hours to complete Final Fantasy X using only items. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, if you have then be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below letting me know what other challenges you want to see. Also, if you're new to the channel, then be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And if you want to help support me and get some awesome benefits while doing so, then consider becoming a Patreon, which is linked down below in the description. As always though, everybody, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.